beautiful children of the stars. Today, I'm going to properly introduce to you my cosmic council of 12 that are part of the Galactic Federation. And yes, they're up there in a ship. And I go there sometimes to talk to them. <laughs> so stay tuned. This is going to be really fascinating because who knows, maybe you have a council up there that you haven't met yet that you want to contact. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly who each member of my council is, what galactic starseed origin they represent, what they do, who they are, what they look like, and why I contacted them, how they help me in my life. Because this is exactly what you can do as well. Anything I can do, you can do too. All right, so let's get started. I'm really excited about this one. You are divine. Thank you so much for joining me, beautiful starseed family. This is an exciting video that I've wanted to do for a long time, but all the things that, that have been happening in the world have kind of distracted me, you know. We got off track a little bit there, but this is so important. And you know why? Because with everything that's going on, we're being sucked into the negativity and into the heavy 3D. And it's so important to remember that we are divine beings, that we are star seeds, and that we have a lot of support at our disposal to help us. We have personal spirit guides. We have angels. We have archangels. We have higher masters. We have galactic councils at our disposal that we can contact, that we can connect with. First of all, make sure you subscribe to this channel to get the hottest spiritual news out of this cosmic oven here. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, all notifications, so you know when a video is coming out. I promise you at least one video a, a week, sometimes two. And if you're interested in working more closely with me, in the description box below is all the information, how you can get readings from me, how you can be alerted when I come out with my Starseed Origins course to help you remember, to help you discover who you are, right? It's all really exciting. All right, so <laughs> let's go. The Council of Twelve. Several years ago, my personal spirit guide team came to me and I started being able to channel them, see them, be guided by them. And when I got more into all this cosmic stuff, into this galactic stuff, when I was understanding that there are actually galactic councils up there, when I was understanding that the universe is organized like we are, like as above, so below. And there is a galactic federation of planets, of high dimensional, mostly fifth dimensional beings that have formed a federation of different interplanetary races that are working together. And they actually, <laughs> they actually have a lot to say out there in the galaxy. And yes, <laughs> For those of you who are new to all of this, I'm sure you're not, but um, yes, I'm going to talk about spaceships. I'm going to talk about light ships up there that are helping us. I'm going to talk about all of that, right? So be prepared to open your mind a little bit. Be prepared to go vroom, vroom, and have your mind blown just a little bit more, right? Why not? Why not? So one of my personal spirit guides is an Arcturian named Elrond, right? When I was channeling my personal spirit guide team, the ones that are with me all the time, I thought Elrond, Arcturian, hmm, aren't there Arcturian ships up there that are helping us? Arcturian ships, Pleiadian ships, Andromeda, there are different councils up there. I kind of knew this. So one day when I was just meditating, I said, Elrond, spirit guide, please come in. And he came in and Elrond is very, very close to me. He's very, very close to me. Elrond is an Arcturian who I always feel that we're very, very closely connected, right? So I said, Elrond, can you take me up there to an Arcturian ship? I just said this in my meditation. I asked him in my mind, can you take me up there? And he kind of went like this. And I said, let's go. And boom, boom. It was like a flash. I suddenly was in my vision, in my inner mind, in a spaceship. I was in a spaceship and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And Elrond is someone, he always takes me by my hand 
and I feel his grip and I know that he's real. I know this is real. I know this is not just fantasy because I feel the connection. I feel the love when he holds my hand like this, right? So I was up there and I was like, Elron, and I was like, mm -hmm, okay, I'm here. And I looked around and I was in the inside of a spaceship, a round ship. And I knew it was kind of a light ship. It was a ship that was organic, a living being. They have consciousnesses somehow. And they are organic bubble type ships. And I knew this was kind of a round ship. And I was standing there looking out at space through rounded windows. And I knew I was there in this ship. And I was like, wow, <laughs> whoa, this is, this is amazing. So sh show me around, show me around. And Elrond took me by the hand and we walked through was kind of like a main big room and there was a table a long table then he took me to this other smaller room with this huge viewing window and I went to the window and I looked down and there was earth <sighs> Gaia like in those photos from the satellites where you look down and you see this huge earth below you spreading in all directions and the cosmos above wow this is real this is real and Elrond looks at me and he's Arcturian. He's about this tall. In my vision, he was as tall as me, but I know that Arcturians are smaller. But when we interact with our guides, sometimes they show us or, or they help us perceive them in a manner that, that, is more, that is more easy in the moment. So he was there, he's, he's blue, blue, and he looked a little bit like those people from Avatar. That's how he showed himself from the movie Avatar. You know, the blue people. That's what he looked like. So he said, yeah, this is real. This is real, you are here. And I knew that this was an Arcturian light, light ship in the Galactic Federation of Planets or the Galactic Federation of Light. I knew this, I had this knowledge. And most times when I receive information, it is clear cognizantly. I'm very clear cognizant. I just know things. I just, the knowledge comes in, boom, boom, boom. I see things too, but, but it's more inner knowing. And it comes in a flash as though I've always known it, you know? So he led me back to this, to the first room where I saw the table. And he said, look, what I saw was this, a long table, okay? A long table with beings of light sitting around the table. Now, I couldn't see exactly who these beings were. I just saw in my mind that there were beings and they were kind of more light, made out of light, because me, a 3D, used to being, used to being a 3D person, going to a 5D place, it takes some time to adjust, I guess, because it's a different vibration. It's a different dimension than we incarnated people are used to, right? So I just saw beings of light. But I saw one, two, three, four, five. There are five on this side. These are the positions around a table, six. One on the end, and that was Elrond. He went there and he sat down. So this is, I'm just gonna draw. <laughs> it's supposed to look like a nice guy. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, I'm not good at drawing, but this is Elrond. Elrond, Arcturian, Arcturus. So his was position number six, so he went and sat down there. Then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then he said, he went like this, I saw an empty place here. So I went and I sat down here at this position number 12. So that's me, little human Natasha. And I sat there, just taking it in. 12 light beings around a table, including me. And I kind of looked around and I felt, I felt this deep connection to every single one of them. And that day that I went up, I didn't see exactly who they were, 
but I saw light beings, I saw kind of shimmering faces or images, but I wasn't sure who they were and I was totally overwhelmed. And then I, I knew the knowing came in that this is my council of 12. They are part of the Galactic Federation of Light and I am part of that council. I am council member number 12. And Elrond, my personal spirit guide, is part of this galactic council. And he is the captain. How can I do a captain's hat? Captain? <laughs> is that what a captain's hat looks like? I don't know. <laughs> he is the captain of that spaceship. So Elrond is the captain of that Arcturian vessel, that light ship. And the others were other light beings, galactic light beings that were there for me. And I was overwhelmed. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I was just tuning into them. And besides for the deep connection, the second thing I felt was an overwhelming love and appreciation and honoring of me from these beings. And I was like, wow, wow. and I was so overwhelmed. I started crying and I was like, wow, these beings, these, these highly conscious, highly dimensional beings are proud of me. They are honoring me. They're sending me so much love. And in that moment, I knew that all of them were telling me and showing me how brave and how incredibly I would say courageous and important I was. How my position on Earth, being part of the Galactic Federation, being part of a higher council, that I chose to come down at this point in time to Earth into a 3D body, to drop down into 3D, forgetting everything, forgetting my mission, needing to work through all the tricky pathways and convoluted corners of 3D, having to grow up not knowing who I was, having to lose connection to my star family, thinking, oh, I'm just a normal person growing up, I'm a child, I'm growing up, going through traumas, going through difficulties, going, going through all that I went through without remembering exactly who I was, <sighs> to in the end, remember, as I'm doing now, and to be there to fulfill my mission and my purpose. And all of them being part of that, all of them supporting me and being there only for me to support me in my mission, in my purpose, so I can succeed to help make the world a better place, to help in the ascension process, to do my job as a blueprint deliverer, right? As part of the blueprinter family and this overwhelming love and support and honor saying we honor you you are so courageous this experience truly changed me it changed my life it changed the way that i saw myself and the, and the way i saw life so that was the first time so then i started going up into meditation and every time i wanted to i would be on that ship and I would meet Elrond and I would see things. So after that first initiation, every time I want to, if I want to right now, I can just say, take me there and I'm there and my council is there. Or each council member is there. So now I'm gonna tell you who they are. So the next few times I went up, it became clearer and clearer who they were. And one day I said, okay, I truly, truly want to know. And I still do this sometimes. I sometimes still ask one or the other one to step forward, say, show me more, show me who you are, show me, show me. And this is the trick to communicating with the other side. All you have to do is focus, hold your focus. To be able to do this, okay, you have to be able to hold your focus a little bit. If you're always running around, you can't hold your focus in meditation for 30 seconds, then it's going to be difficult. But all you have to do is be able to get real quiet and hold your focus for maybe 30 seconds and you ask, show me, step forward, who are you? I want to know, spirit guide team, galactic team, show me, take me there. All you have to do is ask, hold your focus, and then it will happen for you. So every time I want to talk to my spirit guide team or my galactic council, they come in, they take me where I want to go. 
it's that simple. So little by little, I got to know exactly who these beautiful beings are. Now, Elrond, he's one of my inner team of spirit guides as well, and he's the captain of this, of this ship. And he's shown me the fleet. He's shown me Pleiadian ships as well. He's shown me many different things up there. I've gotten a lot of downloads, things that I talk about. Sometimes they show me, all right? So, spirit guide, well, I would say council member, also a spirit guide, but council member number one is... Who's this? Who do you think this is? Okay. Who do you think this is? <laughs> this is Gandalf. Those of you who've watched my video know Gandalf is my gatekeeper spirit guide. Okay, Gandalf. We all have a gatekeeper spirit guide who helps us to open knowledge as it's appropriate for us, higher knowledge. Gandalf, he's also Arcturian. Arcturian, okay? And he is my guide number one when I do Akashic Records work. He's also the first guide I ever met when I did, um, I was at HypnoThoughts. This is a hypnosis congression in Las Vegas when I used to be a hypnotherapist. I went there to learn life between lives and past life regression techniques. Um, I learned that from one of the students of Newton, right, of Newton, Journey of Souls, Destiny of Souls, one of his students, and I learned those techniques. And the person who led me into my life between lives and to heaven, so to say, the first guide that I ever met was Gandalf, my gatekeeper guide. And he led me through when I was in deep hypnosis to go into my life between lives. And he showed up here as my guide number one on my galactic team and he's also the Akashic Records guide so when I work in the Akashic Records for you for clients for anything when I go in the first person who's there is Gandalf and he usually shows himself as taller like tall and he looks like he looks kind of like Gandalf not exactly but almost like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings right because I love wizards so he's Gandalf he's Arcturian a little bit blue right the color is a little bit blue purple right the face um, and he's there in the Akashic records and he's standing over the records when he when I give in the data in the crystal computer and he goes zoom and zoom, the hologram comes up and he's there controlling it so I'm there and he does yes no yes no so he's the one working with me primarily in the Akashic records every single day so he has position number one Arcturian He's also a blueprint originator. Hmm? Okay. Position number two. <laughs> Position number two is a special guide that I called in one day when I wanted higher knowledge. I wanted another spirit guide on my personal team. This is a few years ago. And I actually made a video where, where I mentioned him. Say me, those who have seen that video where I mentioned him. The second one <laughs> is Yoda. Okay, Star Wars, you can see I'm very fantasy oriented. Yoda, I'm going to draw him here. Now that's a pretty good drawing, huh? Yoda, also Arcturian. Okay, he's very, very, very ancient and very wise. He's also a blueprint originator. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of blueprinters to work with because I'm a blueprint deliverer which is a job description of those who want to come to deliver the divine blueprint, the divine matrix of Mother Earth, how it's meant to be, to activate light codes and all those types of things. And the blueprint originators are the highest blueprinters who actually think of and create worlds, right? They're the ones. So Yoda is the one who I called in, who is a very ancient, very wise Arcturian. So... If I, I know that if I need really high knowledge or also knowledge of numbers, knowledge of practical things in this world, Yoda's there to give me those downloads. He, he, he tells me. Position number three, position number three is an Andromedan star being. 
very high vibrational white bright light with with a star coming from here so this is my andromedan kind of angelic guide okay andromedan gender neutral i'll call him i'll say him star Okay, so this is a very high vibrational Andromedan guide. And all these guides are part of the Galactic Federation of Planets. So they all play a part in orchestrating, I would say, different things up there. And orchestrating different things to do with Earth and the liberation of the planet and the galactic wars. The war between dark and light and everything that's happening, right? Number four, one of my most beloved ones is my Pleiadian Star Commander. So I'm going to just draw Pleiadian. Right? And she also has a star coming from her forehead like this. Pleiadian Star Commander. And you see, some of those don't have specific names, right? Star. This one does not have a name. The Star Commander doesn't have a name hasn't revealed her name yet it's a woman though it's a woman Pleiadian right and for me in this lifetime I resonate mostly with the Pleiadian energy I feel very very closely connected to the Pleiadians I feel that I embody a lot of Pleiadian energy in this lifetime and I, I'm always very very aligned um, to anything to do with the Pleiadians, right? I love the Pleiadians so much. <laughs> Number five, who's this? Number five is a beautiful Earther woman called Pachamama. Pachamama, okay. Earth. And she looks like um, a maybe 45-year-old or 50-year-old indigenous woman with black hair she has braids she has feathers she's very closely connected and rooted to the earth she's very wise and she's the earther soul contact she's the earth contact who knows everything about earth mother gaia she's a specialist and she's she's a beautiful wise wise woman as well pachamama earth then elrond the arcturian now, these are all kind of like humanoid type people, star beings here. Now, here comes the row of the animal beings. And these are not animal spirit guides or like um, spirit animals. These are, these are highly conscious fifth or higher dimensional beings. And another thing you must know, in the universe, there are hundreds and thousands, I would say in the Milky Way, there are hundreds and thousands of civilizations out there. And they have all types of highly conscious beings, not only human type beings, whale beings, dolphin beings, dragon beings, horse beings, centaurs, um, any animal that you can imagine can evolve to a high consciousness and still look like the animal. So we're used to kind of, oh, the animals, they're a lower vibration, they're a lower consciousness. Only on this planet, and on this planet, not all of them either. On this planet, there are animals that are higher in consciousness than us. Take a guess which ones. I will give you one example, the dolphins and the whales. They're not 3D, they're 5D. They're 5D and look what we're doing to them, right? So, all right, let's continue. Number seven. Number seven on my council. <laughs> and this is the most amazing. I'm, I'm not going to tell you the story of this this time, but I'm going to tell you who it is. This is the Phoenix. The Phoenix. And this is a galactic being coming from the future. All right. This is a timeline that is being activated now. This is a timeline of a being coming from the future, and this has to do with the Draconians. This has to do with the Beta Centauri Hadarans. This has to do with the healing of the races of negative and positive beings, and has to do with the healing of, I would say, first of all, the planet Hadar, planet Hadar in Beta Centauri, and the healing of all that has happened throughout the galaxy regarding the Draconians. So the Phoenix 
you know, phoenix rising from the ashes. And this phoenix is a fire being, red and orange and yellow. And this phoenix does look like half dragon, half bird, half, half dragon, half bird, I would say. Half dragon, half bird. I can't even say how it looks because it's it's like whoosh, just wings and and feathers and and just a beautiful fire creature. <coughs> Position number nine. And this one you know. She is Lola. Her name was Lola. She was a cosmic whale. Da, 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 da. Lola. Lola, the cosmic whale from a parallel dimension. And her, her whole name is Lola de la Luna. <laughs> yeah, she's called Lola de la Luna. <laughs> Lola of the moon. <laughs> okay. And she's a magnificent, magnificent cosmic whale, silvery gray with two hearts coming from a parallel dimension from the planet Farah, okay? I'll tell you a little bit more about these in a minute, in a, and, and this will blow your mind, this will blow your mind. Number nine is Emerald, the dragon, okay? Emerald, the dragon. Oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad, that picture, is it? See the wings? Emerald, the dragon being. Dragon. Also from a parallel dimension, but this dragon being has incarnated on a lot of different, in a lot of different planets close by. This dragon being has incarnated in Lyra, in Sirius, on Maldek, and on Earth in the olden days of Mu, of Lemuria. So my emerald dragon being number 10 is a centaur from Alpha Centauri. Centaur, half horse, half man. And he's a big, magnificent, powerful being. Centaur from Alpha Centauri. Okay, Alpha Centauri. Dark blue in appearance. The Alpha Centauri's that I see, the typical ones, obviously each planetary system has all, has many different kinds of beings and creatures, but the ones that tend to come and help us or tend to incarnate as star seeds in bodies here are the ones that are vibrationally matched and aligned and are able to do this. So the Alpha Centauri's often show themselves to me as horses, centaurs, or people, men beings, um, very strong, very protective. Um, they have they have deep, deep, I would say, solidarity and love. And Alpha Centauri will never will never forsake you or leave you. The Alpha Centauri's are so they have such loyalty. Okay, but they, they can be like they're very strict, they're very protective, they're very straight. And number eleven is none but Aslan. My lion being from Sirius, okay? My Syrian lion guide who I talk about a lot, who also came to me before this. So he's also a personal spirit guide of mine. So this is a personal spirit guide. Elrond is a personal spirit guide and Yoda is a personal spirit guide of mine. So three of them are part of my personal spirit guide team. Now, one thing which is very interesting is your spirit guides of personal measure or your spirit guides in your galactic team often are this. Okay, and, and this, this is the part that's going to go. Your spirit guides often represent a part of you. They often represent you in a past life of yours or you in a parallel timeline or you as a sp split off part of your oversoul, your oversoul that split off into different souls and often your spirit guides are connected to you in either one of those ways. So each one of these spirit guides represents a being 
of a place and planet where I personally have incarnated. So I've incarnated in all those places. I've had many incarnations on Arcturus, obviously in the Pleiades. I've had incarnations on Earth. I've had incarnations in the Andromeda Galaxy. I've had incarnations on Alpha Centauri, many incarnations on Sirius, beautiful planet. I've had incarnations. My first incarnation was on Farah. And I was a whale being in my very first incarnation, soul in body, soul in flesh. So Lola is me and I am Lola. We are one and the same soul that I know. The Phoenix in the future timeline? I don't know, who knows? So. The ones who come to you, the ones who come to your assistance, who help you, why do they want to help you? Often you say, oh, the spirits are there, they just want to help. No, 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 no. The spirit guides who are there specifically for you, they have a deeper purpose for helping you because they are you. They are part of you. They're connected to your soul. They are part of your greater soul in parallel dimensions and past lives as a split off soul your oversoul. So these spirit guides are themselves, but they are also me, <laughs> right? So they are all representing the Galactic Federation of Light. And they're all members of the Galactic Federation of Light. And so am I, hooray. I'm also part of the Galactic Federation of this specific council. And this council is here to support me on my specific mission on Earth. And many times when I meditate, I go up. Either all of them are there. What happens when I say, I need to know, show me what's going on with the world, show me. Then this table becomes like a window and you know, it's like, it changes and it becomes like a viewing window where I see Earth because this spaceship is floating above Earth, looking down, right? Doing its thing up there. And then I can look down and I see the earth and they show me what's going on. They show me with clouds or visions or, or beams. They, they show me what's happening. So they're there to support me from above, to give me warnings, to tell me what's going on. Many times I just ask, I have a question, I say, spirit guy, can you please come in whoever wants to help me? And then one or the other will come in. Very often Aslan comes because he's my personal spirit guide. I love Aslan, he, he comes very often. Recently, I needed to know something. Recently I needed to see something. And I asked whoever wanted to to come in. And three Pleiadians came in. My star commander came in. My personal Pleiadian spirit guide, Mirabella Chrysalis, so that, that was the second one who came in. And the third one came in is my, is my Akashic Records spirit guide, who's also a Pleiadian. I've got Gandalf, I've got three other ones. And she's the captain who helps me travel to different planets when I'm channeling for my clients. And in that moment, I felt like, a, like one of my Pleiadian incarnations too. I felt very Pleiadian. And so there were four of us, four Pleiadian women, and we were holding hands and we were channeling and they were showing me things and it was so cool it was so cool so those decided to come in sometimes when we want to know intel pachamama comes in and tells us the star commander has taken me to the pleiadian base there's like a pleiadian base like a starship base and she showed me all the other pleiadian ships and she took me into a healing chamber when i asked her Lola comes very often. Lola um, travels and journeys with me and she comes down to be with me sometimes when I'm driving. When I'm driving and I feel a bit weird, I call in Lola, who's behind me when I'm driving my car. The phoenix comes and goes eh, eh, like this, makes this noise, and the phoenix flies ahead to see what's going on. The phoenix flies ahead, the dragon is above me, Lola is behind me, the centaur runs on the right and Aslan runs on the left. All these beautiful, powerful animals <laughs> in formation, moving forward with me, protecting me, 
showing me what I need to see, bringing visions to me. And, and I feel like I'm flying through the universe. It's, like, it's the coolest thing. So you see, these spirit guides are so cool. And they're telling me I'm doing good. Wow, how can I be with all these great beings? I'm just this stupid little human. And then when I thought that, I felt this huge wave. They were almost indignant saying, no, you are the best. You are down there. You jumped into that mess. We're up here in 5D watching everything where it's so easy, but you're down there. You're actually in the battlegrounds. You're the warrior. You're the brave one. You're the one who fearlessly just said, okay, I'm going to do it. And it's true. I'm still fearless to this day. And knowing that I have these people at my back, do you think I'm afraid of anything now? I'm not afraid of anything, of anything. I'm not afraid of anything, of anybody. I'm divinely protected. These are me and I am them. So the trait of each one I can call in at any time. <laughs> and I am protected so strongly and so divinely at any time. And I'm telling you, you who is watching Beautiful Starseed, you have your team as well. You have your spirit guide team, and I'm very sure that you also have a galactic team up there. Maybe not exactly like this, maybe not, not on a spaceship, but you have your team that has your back. You're divinely guided, you're divinely protected, you're honored, you are loved. You have several teams that uphold you and honor you. You have to know this. Don't feel insignificant that you are here existing, standing in your body on planet Earth right now is, is huge, is huge. I mean, look what's happening. Look what we're going through. We knew this. We understood this timeline before we came in, but we did it anyways, knowing of the dangers, knowing of the chaos, knowing of the forgetting, knowing of the great spells that are being put upon us. And you knew this and you came anyways because you said, I'm going to make it. I'm going to awaken. I'm going to be able to uphold my high consciousness. I'm going to remember who I am. And now you know that you have incredible support. You have so many. I mean, look, at these are 12. Okay, minus me, that's 11. Then I've got a spirit guide team of seven. Okay, some of them are these. So, so that's, let's say, 15. Then I've got an outer circle of guides, which I know that they're there. There's seven as well. Then I've got archangels at my disposal. I've got a guardian angel. So that's at least, let's say, 25. 25 different light beings that I know of physically, who they are, who are there to help me. 25! <laughs> and all of you have that same amount and infinitely more. You just have to call some in and then they will come as well. Right? So it's a beautiful thing to know that you are part of a higher team, that your soul is truly magnificent and multifaceted and, th and that you are just divinely protected and supported and you have a team. So why don't you go tonight, maybe where, before you go to sleep, sit there, meditate a little bit. And if you don't know how to meditate, doesn't matter. Meditating is just holding your consciousness still for a moment, just sitting still, breathing and just holding your focus, holding your focus a little bit. And when you wander off thinking about things, you just bring your focus back to kind of a neutral place. Just do that for like one minute. That's all it needs. And then say, Galactic Council, Spirit Guide Team, please come in, come in. I want to see, I want to see you. Please come in. Something, whoa, there's a road behind us something will come in someone will come in and if you hold if you uphold the intention to call in your team of light nothing bad's gonna come in how is that how's that possible it's not possible intention is everything and consciousness is consciousness is everything so uphold that get yourself into a high vibration and say team of light come in i want to know you i want to see do I have a galactic council? I want to go up there. Three, two, one, boom, I'm up, right? <laughs> Try these things and it's going to happen. But you have to ask, you have to intend it, you have to believe it's possible, you have to believe it exists. Be open and be a little more determined. Don't be passive. 
being passive is not good, right? You have to be really super, super, super proactive. One big problem in the spiritual community is, oh, I'm just going to go with the flow. Oh, I'm just going to wait and see. Why aren't my spirit guides talking to me? I'm so high vibrational. Have you sat down and asked them or demanded? I demand, I always say, I demand. Come down now. I want to see you, come on, right? Be a little bit more forceful. Your spirit guide team, usually they can't even come, they can't show themselves if you don't ask, right? You have to ask. You have to ask, you have to call them in, you have to be proactive and they will come and you will be surprised. So do it and let your mind be blown as mine was blown, okay? All right. Please leave your comments down below. If you have a council, if you have spirit guides, if you have seen them, if you have gone, gone there, if you've been there, let me know, right? I would love it to start a conversation there. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. More about star seats coming because I'm kind of a bit sick and tired of all this cabal stuff. I will continue to make videos about it, I promise. There is a lot more I have to say about it, but I will intermingle it with more positive stuff and with star seed information. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Love you all. I hope this has been interesting for you. Natasha, Cosmic Empress. Ciao for now.